Hello, welcome back to the channel. So I know you want to learn to delay your release. I'm gonna show you how, but first a warning, it's not gonna be easy. Today we're visiting the release again. One of the things that everybody's been telling you is generating the speed in your swing and to a certain extent they're totally right. Releasing the club in the right way at the right time is going to create a sort of catapult effect which will multiply the base speed that you've generated with your arms and hands bringing the club down. Obviously delaying that as long as possible means bringing more of this multipli multipli multiplier closer to the golf ball and getting this speed through the golf ball is really the big trick. But how do we do it and what is it we're actually releasing? Well, I think the most simple approach is to basically see the angles that you create in the trail elbow and the trail wrist and more or less it's those that you're releasing. In the modern day swing, we're also releasing the angles we generate in our legs. And you'll see a lot of the top players actually creating even more angles in order to use more power and get a higher multiplier actually through impact. And these are things which are gonna help you to hit the golf ball further. But getting that under control is extremely difficult. And the tip I've got for you today is gonna be a difficult one to turn around because first of all it isn't going to work unless you have a hip rotation. If you are getting your hips rotated to the target, if you're getting your shoulder down, then you have a chance of actually using this tip correctly. Otherwise it's going to hurt rather than it's going to help. What I'm talking about is your head. For generations we've been told to keep our head down and for some reason it keeps popping up anyway and the reason for this is quite simple you're accelerating too early towards the ball and your head realizes this and you go up so you get extension with your arms and extension with your upper body curling causing an early extension and therefore you hit the golf ball at least to a certain extent rather than hitting the ground were you not to turn your hips and to straighten your arms you're just gonna go into the ground and obviously that's not something you want to do so the only time really that delaying the release is going to be of any use to you whatsoever is if you get this hip rotation and shoulder rotation and i think i've done enough videos about pelvic rotation in the past uh, to give you a good idea about how you should be doing that what we're really talking about today is keeping the and delaying the, the, the release even more, mainly for advanced players who are actually getting this hip rotation in. And there I want you guys to, and girls to be looking at what your head is doing. Your head height is very important as far as keeping pressure on the golf club and keeping these angles through impact. So if you think about it, in the backswing, if you have a video here at the front, your head should not be staying at the same height because of the crunch in your side muscles. You should be getting pulled down very slightly um, in the backswing. So you'll start at one head height and as you take the club back and pick it up, your head is gonna dip very, very slightly as you go into this side bend in the backswing. Obviously the side bend is also gonna limit how high that you can get your arms up, but by changing direction, getting this kind of sitting and rotating in the hips is going to take the head down another step. So you are a lot closer to the ground than you were at the starting position. Obviously crunching your right side or your trail side is also going to help the head to come down even further. And then we go into the release. Now, everybody, including advanced players, is gonna have the feeling of wanting to do this when they release the club. And that's the worst thing you can do. If you look at it from the rear camera, 
doing this, even in this position, is going to get you pushing your hands away from your body, blocking the club. You're gonna get a, a weak shot out to the right. And in worst case scenario, you're gonna hit the shank of the club, the socket, and it's gonna disappear into the bushes. So one of the main and most difficult parts of the golf swing in the release and keeping the release is going down again with your head through impact. Now, hopefully from the back camera, you're gonna be able to see how despite my leg straightening, my head goes down because I come into this bow with my body and I've actually told my head it's okay to go down. I think an awful lot of us do have a great respect for the ground. So you've got to basically drill into your, into your brain that it's okay when you get to this position to go down, you will not hit into the ground because your arm isn't straight until out here. This is when you're using your arms, your wrists and your elbow, the swing is no longer a, a perfect circle. If everything was staying straight, then it would be like the wheel of a bicycle. But because I bend the arms and bring them down in this manner, if you look at the width in the backswing from the club head, it's gonna be narrower coming down here. It's narrower around the body, and it's then gonna go out towards the target, looking from the front camera and around, but you can see from the back camera, it's actually going around me in this kind of plane and to the, to the left of target for a right-handed golfer. And this is why you don't hit into the ground along with the kind of bowing of your body, which is actually pulling the center of your thoracic spine away from the golf ball. You are not gonna hit into the ground even if your head goes down. So what you're looking for in your, in your swing are versatile, basically three steps of height in your head position during the swing. One, as you go back, two, as you change direction, and three, as you release. And by keeping your head down in this way, you are actually going to keep these angles longer and cause the arms to straighten later, which is gonna get you more pressure on the golf ball. It's gonna get you a cleaner strike, better smash, and it's gonna mean that you're gonna have more club head speed. You will actually feel this club head speed after impact. So the feeling is almost as if it's out here. Now I'm gonna try and do one for you here. I don't know if you hear that, but that went off like a rocket. It's really to a greater extent all about making yourself do it, almost as if you're gonna give the golf ball a kiss as you go through. You want your head going in this direction as your arms are straightening out. And if we look back at my swing in slow motion, you'll probably see my head doesn't go down at all. That's not because I'm not trying to do it. It's because I'm an old man <laughs> and my body isn't allowing me to do it. But even if you're getting to the point like me where mobility is unfortunately becoming a little bit of an issue, then you still wanna have this feeling of your head going in that direction so you get as much bend as possible in the spine, you hold the angles as long as possible, and maybe even more important than that, you keep the hands and club moving around in plane through the golf ball, and you don't start coming up out of it early and creating all kinds of disasters in your shot. It's a great game but it's not always an easy one. Hope you like it. If you did, smash that like button because the algorithm needs those. Don't forget to subscribe to me if you haven't done already. I'll be back with a new video very shortly. Until then, bye-bye now.